This is an excerpt from a recent Power Up webinar on how to get organized for editing. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to modify library properties in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. First thing I want to talk about is library preferences. Let's open up the inspector. Notice that I've selected the library over here. When the library is selected, we have a new option called Storage Locations. Modify Settings allows us to change where our media is stored. What I've done here is I've created a folder anywhere I want. I've created it on the desktop to make it easy for me to show you, but it could be stored on any external storage device. I don't want media stored in the library. I want the media stored externally. So that would be in the media folder and click choose. If I'm going to be taking this library across multiple computers, you want the motion content. These are custom made motion projects stored in the library. That way, wherever the library goes, your custom motion content will go with it. If you're not moving between computers, you don't have to change this. Cache files are things like render files, analysis files, keyword files. They can normally be stored in a library, but I can also choose to have them stored elsewhere. And here I've created a folder called cache just to show you what's in it. Then click OK to accept your changes. Selecting a library, then changing library properties, allows us to control where media, motion, cache, and backup files are stored. You don't need to change this, but it's good to know that you can. Changing the location of media references might make sense when you're editing media from a server, but want all optimized or proxy files stored locally. Changing the location of cache files, which principally means render files, makes sense when your library is stored on a server, but you want to decrease network traffic by storing generated files locally. And as I said earlier, storing custom motion projects like generators or titles in the library makes sense when you're moving the library between computers. You don't need to change these, but you can if you want to. Mark asks, I'm working on a 4K documentary and wondering how best to organize my libraries. Is it better to have multiple libraries and then cut between them or a humongous library with everything in it? My original media all exists on external RAIDs, which I've then imported into Final Cut. I'm using proxies, of course, and cutting on a new iMac. In general, you want to have all of your media inside a single library. It'll make your life easier. But you don't want the media stored in the library. You want the media stored externally and simply referenced to the library. About a year, year and a half ago, I learned that a library in Final Cut has an upper limit of around 3,500 clips. So if you're going to have more than about 3,500 clips, then you'll want to split them across libraries. Most of us don't use that many clips in our projects, so it's a non-issue. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on how to get organized for editing. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 272B. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times every month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.